but we didn't. Off your phone if it's not off, David. Oh yeah, you know that we're gonna get these alerts from the thing. But we'll just yeah, we're we're gonna just, get, when we get, get the alerts, we'll just we'll get the alerts there from our, alerts from, from the national from our president. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. So, but well, the one thing I've forgotten completely is partially completely though. Mark reminded me, company name and mm-hmm. what you do, and we're gonna yeah, just dig. Let's just dig in. What do you guys do? Okay, so uh, our company name is Lumen DX, and we identify skin disease instantly from a smartphone picture using, you guessed it, AI. Okay, yeah, right. Exactly. Oh, you've refined your pitch from we take pictures of uh, really ugly body parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's our first use case, yeah. but yeah, that's just our go to market. Say, so, and you Sorry. are Susan Conover. Oh, yes, and my we're, name's Susan Conover. Yeah, by the way, we're, we're on. Oh, yeah, we're great. On, yeah, it we're just kind of starts, <laughs> and, yeah, just and, you know. So, oh, who, who so, are you? Oh, I'm Dave. I'm not supposed to do that. Yeah, we don't do that anymore. <laughs> and I'm Mark. Yeah, you're Mark. And that was Nick and Ziad. Um, so how did you get into it? How did you get into the um, that business? How did you get into that company? You are you, you're the are founder. you interviewing her? I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Um, one might ask. <laughs> one, if, if, if one were curious, <laughs> what the hell made you do this? If up a list of questions. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I my background's actually in engineering and management, um, but I got melanoma when I was 22, yeah. and that's what brought me into the dermatology world. Okay, because oh, you learned what a pain it was. Yeah, because uh, I didn't go to the doctor for a while, even though my mom found yeah. a spot and said yep. you should go. Yeah, you should do something. Yeah. Um, and then I sort of, through MIT uh, and doing a lot of market research, yep. uh, talked to a lot of people and realized that uh, basically, skin disease and all healthcare is an open loop problem. Um, so you don't, like, no one's, you're, you're not often going to the doctor regularly, um, and so yep. people aren't going to catch stuff. Right. Uh, so it's yep. up to you and your your family and friends to find, uh, like, a, a mole that looks weird yep. or anything. So, um, so Mark looks weird. <laughs> we should do something about that. And there's not enough AI in the world. <laughs> you know, they talk about the signal and the garbage and... <laughs> In my garbage. case, they're one and the same. A lot of garbage. A lot of garbage. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, so keep but, going. But, but you're okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I'm right. fine now. I go to the dermatologist every six months. Right. Um, but, yeah, uh, Good. basically. So the open loop problem is, is yeah. that is that there is no closed loop unless somebody particularly asks yeah. like, or, or, or tells, and I've got a problem here. Somebody will take a look at it. Some, and or then a family member will see something in the, in the like on your back or whatever and, you, and go, yeah, that doesn't look right. Exactly. Or, or it's you, growing. Or, so why don't you solve that problem? She is, um, I guess. Are you solving that mole problem? evaluation problem? No, not, yeah, maybe. No, the, the open loop problem. Oh, yeah. So we're um, empowering patients to understand what they could have and then get connected to doctors quickly. So we're accelerating care um, and, and so basically like filtering in some of these cool technologies into the home, which is addressing the open loop so problem. So it closes the loop somewhat. Yeah. Um, have you thought about hooking this into like the British, um, what do they call it, CCTV? What do you have? What do they call that whole system of cameras in, in the UK where they watch people like the Russian spies? <laughs> Close circuit TV, but you yeah, know, it's just spies is what spies. they call they it. They call them spies. Yeah. GC, so GCHQ our, or whatever. In, in our version two, we have this system. It's, a, it's We actually licensed it from a home security system. It just installs a lot of cameras in your home. Oh, and so would you do that? That would close that's the loop a, more. That's a joke. But no. <laughs> <laughs> that would certainly close the loop. But this sounds like it's on trend for some of the things that are non-medical that are like helping you get dressed where it's evaluating or scanning your body mm. and it's coming back and saying, you know, using AI or ML, we're going to, and this is not an interview question, but it's sounding like it. But um, <laughs> you told me, don't interview. <laughs> but it interview. sounds like you're, you're kind of in, inspired or it's a it's same swim lane. I'm just going to keep going and ignore him. Uh, or is, <laughs> I was it, is, it, is it sort of in that same genre where, you know, it's looking at something and then making a recommendation? Yeah. I mean, it's basically <laughs> self-driving <laughs> car technology okay. applied to medicine. Okay. <laughs> and, and your first use case is skin lesions? Why? Yeah. Why skin lesions? Well, yes. she had she had a personal connection okay, to it. Yeah, that too. <laughs> but there must be another reason. Yeah. So I we oh, we did so many interviews last year and this year, actually over four hundred to identify mm-hmm. the uh, yeah. You said this before, but low hanging fruit of dermatology. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah which yeah, is yeah, genital yeah. issues. Okay. So, but why? Um, <laughs> it's still funny. Mar- it's still funny. It's yeah. funny every time. <laughs> <laughs> so wait a minute. But why? Um, 
Sorry. So that's a low hanging fruit. I get that. But why? Uh, why? The, okay. So you have experience in it, and that. So wait a minute. But aren't she's there got a connection. Issues? There's aren't a there problem. Larger, oh, I know. Because you can also do these. You can also do these with a camera. You can't. So what's the biggest killer? What well, is the big other than speaking with Mark? What's the biggest killer on the planet? Is it? It's heart disease, right? Or something like that? What is it? Or age? Other than age. <laughs> <laughs> Other than age, age statistically, hundred percent. Age. These yeah. days, age the opioid right. epidemic seems to be oh. taking off. Um, I don't think that's that level no, that's, of incidence. Yeah. And then but, traffic, like car accidents. Okay, no, that's pretty minor. I, I think there's probably a higher incidence of but how about know, the melanoma case? than car accidents. <laughs> no, no, no. no. My, my wife had a cousin that, that had pretty serious issues in that area. So well, it's a, uh, it's actually sample size. Well, okay, so. But I'm not. I, I, I'm, I'm less joking about it. But yeah. it sounds like you had the availability of great sensors on, on cameras. Yeah. And you're just hauling the image back and doing something with mm-hmm. it at your end. Is that mm-hmm. is that the way it works? Yeah, exactly. Okay. We have a web app now, so you can okay. take a picture. I think the question. It sounds like you kind of want to ask, but we can't ask questions. You can ask questions. Is, um, you can, can ask, ask questions. I, I can actually, ask specifically, questions. I can't ask we, questions. I can't Everyone ask else questions can. either. <laughs> <laughs> is like why not moles? Right. Well, no. It's like, that's I mean, why important. skin? I think the answer why is because skin? you can detect skin conditions with a phone. Yeah. And you can't detect. Well, yes, you can. You're getting there, but you can't detect uh, heart problems with an eye, a phone, except mm. that Tim Cook says well, you can. Well, now you, yeah, yeah, with you a can. fancy watch. But as watch. of last week, you could. Yeah, now you can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, but, so, that's, but that's that's that an why? that's an external sensor fundamentally, you know, for the heart issue. So for cardiac monitoring, there was another thing that was out there that you put your two fingers on the bottom of the phone. It was like a special case you put on the outside of your thing but um i'm not interviewing her you're not i'm not yeah. i'm just thinking i was thinking yeah no i I, 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 was just, it. I was just poking at the issue of it sounds like you found a popular that is a a, a bad disease mm-hmm. that's amenable to readily readily being sensed and diagnosed by something everyone has yeah now we're wondering if there are any other diseases like that like the common cold could you have said we're going to go and detect the common cold by putting cameras in the house and when you sneeze enough to say you've got a cold? <laughs> yeah. That's probably more common than uh, melanoma. Um, so there's a lot of, if we're talking about like detection of the technologies of uh, medical issues, there's like fall detection you can do oh, yeah. Yeah. The, with yeah. Wi-Fi. Yeah, the um, gyros and the accelerometers yeah, yeah. on the Why don't oh, you yeah. device yeah. or on a pendant. And detecting like Parkinson's yep. from yeah. how people type yeah, yeah, into yeah. a phone. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. so so motor-related activities are great for leveraging smartphones. Right. There's uh, And then there are the portals into the body, right? Skin is easily accessible and visual. Um, looking into the eyes, right, right for like hearing tests, things I've seen. Yeah, audio or uh, yeah, and um, and then pulse, right? Anything you yep. can detect with various sensors right. in the outside. So you could have done any. Your company could have done any number of things, but yeah. this is one you had a personal connection to. Yeah, and I oh. think it was. Um, so there, it's not being, <laughs> and it's not being solved. Yeah, I'm not interviewing. And I wasn't in the medical space and I honestly had no interest in being in the medical space because of regulations and all sorts right. of stuff but aren't um, you in the medical space yeah we oh, are I see. Uh, yeah. because of the personal connection yeah, yeah but you're not de- you don't have to deal with 510ks or anything do you because no. you're not you know you're not under the skin you're just taking a picture of something and you really just have to deal with uh, HIPAA right um, so, so we've actually don't mention that. <laughs> well, we figured out a way that we don't have to address HIPAA, or, okay. or uh, we don't manage PHI at this okay. stage. Um, yeah. but in the future, of course, we will okay. address that. Um, and it's decision support; it's not diagnosis. Okay. Once you get into diagnosis, of course, you have five, ten K, class two, the whole. Right. Shebang. How do you avoid the personally identifying information or the HIPAA equivalent of that? Yeah. So you know, we're making a genital image analysis app. Um, yeah. And so we're not taking names or emails, right? We're just taking basic demographics because you don't need that stuff to be able to identify. So it's an ID number, yeah, fundamentally. Exactly. So and that's not doesn't count. I guess not. So it's, it's a randomly random, random, assigned. Random, randomly assigned. So yeah. you you can send a message back to it, but uh-huh. you don't know who it is. Uh, yeah, exactly. Oh, really? And then we can connect people. To other services, and so those are like paid services, of course, like talking oh. to a doctor remotely. But the, here's oh. the beauty: we can involve blockchain in anonymous payments. Oh, oh yeah, it's coming <laughs> back, please. Blockchain. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Blockchain. It's <laughs> <laughs> terrible. Oh God! So it's I'm sorry. Where's joke. blockchain? <laughs> I'm thinking, where's a blockchain player? <laughs> um, so if we wanted to provide full care uh, that patients could pay for, 
um, but not be traced back to them, right? The, that's the beauty oh. of, of cryptocurrency. So I'm, I'm, on behalf of Seattle, I'm going to say blockchain. Blockchain. <laughs> <laughs> blockchain. Oh, no shit. That's great. I never thought of that. But, like, that's, you know, biting off too much yeah, right yeah. now. You know, that's... Okay, Yeah, so... but if you put the word blockchain on a, on an investor yeah, deck right. somewhere, oh, it's a blockchain. No, no, no. AI and blockchain. AI, ML, and blockchain. Yeah. That's kind of like the yeah. what else can holy have? trinity. You know? AI, ML, blockchain, smartphone. You know? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. Oh, you're done. You can get that in. There. Yeah. In fact, if I had money, I yeah, you did that. Here's five million dollars. <laughs> uh, so okay, so you have a connection with this, which makes sense. And yeah. you're how far have you gotten? Um, and then we want to know all about failure, but keep going. Yeah. So how yeah. far have you, how has the company gotten? So we've gotten pretty far. We have a team of six people. Um, hmm. Yeah, and we have raised some money on our safe. And cool. we're not we're not done, but we're still raising. Good. And we talked to the FDA, figure out how we could do this and avoid five ten K and that's been super valuable. Were they cooperative? Um, the FDA? Yeah, so we informally talked to them, and we yeah. actually, uh, it's a back-channel method, but, yeah. um, and, and they are changing how they're regulating these okay. sort of things, especially medical image analysis uh, is like a classic example of how AI can really improve right. okay. patient outcomes. And um, I'm just trying to think. Oh, we launched our beta online on August Ooh, 1st. Congratulations. Yeah, that's, that's the biggest. Yeah, so iPhone. Biggest iPhone as opposed to uh, Android. Oh, uh, so it's a web app, so you can oh. access on any phone. Cool. You're just sending. You're just hauling back an image. Yeah, exactly. So you take so, a picture with it, however you however you choose to. Mm-hmm. It could be a regular camera. So oh, yeah. does it work? Does the system work? Yeah. Really? So we have 82 percent accuracy what? on yeah identifying the correct disease within the top five That's results. Great. Yeah. So. So um, then what? What do you? So then what happens to the typical person who download uploads a picture gets a they don't get a diagnosis. They get a suggestion that maybe you ought to see a doctor in flashing red lights, mm. and then it says quickly. Yeah, so there's what could it be, you and then how to interpret that, yeah. you know, into, like, action taking. And we don't do the interpreting. We just say this is what it could be, right. and then here are easy ways to talk to a doctor. Um, otherwise, so, we just tell everyone, go talk to a doctor, right? Yeah, now. that's why I say. Yeah, so <laughs> is, is part of your model a referral? You can't, you don't, you can't do doctor referrals, can you? Oh, mm. yeah, lawyers in the room. <laughs> well, just one. Yeah, yeah. Money, money, money. Yeah, just one. Yeah, is there yeah. money in this for the referral? Yeah, how do you make money? Not. Let's how just do you make money. 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 Well, What's the point so of that? not doing this for, you yeah, know. Yeah, you, you're not yeah. doing this for uh, for free, I assume. Um, there's money. Well, maybe, maybe not. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's early yeah, days. Negative but. money. Yeah, so there are two measures of success in this. Uh, one is data that we get from patients. Ooh. And then two is money. Right. Okay, so what are you going to do? The <laughs> the money going? There we are. We found it. Well, you, you must be able to do something with the data, monetize the data. Really? I'm assuming uh, at some point, right? Yeah, so you, you use the data and classify it and feed that back into the magical AI, and it improves over time. And so that's, you know, in, in parallel with money. Um, but we get paid for advertising services, um, like talking to oh, a doctor in your okay. area or talking to a doctor from home, obviously in our first use case. That right. Can you do, is, are they allowed to, under the uh, rules in Massachusetts I, or wherever you're working with your doctors to provide a referral fee? Uh, so for conversion, which is like the referral fee, yeah. no. Yeah. But advertising is advertising. Uh, yeah, it's the same so. way AdWords gets paid to tell you partners is in your area and you can book an appointment. Is there okay. enough money in that? Uh, so it's lower margin at this stage. Uh, yeah. It really is. Oh, it's nicely put. Pa- parallel data strategy. That was the question, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So hold on. Uh, so you, um, on the data side, the magical AI can't know anything unless you give it data. Give it data. Yeah. Unless you tell it not only... And you have to train it with enough data so that it's... Yeah. So how are you going to... Don't you, know. you need, don't you need the follow-up information? Just uh, a bunch of pictures is not that valuable. Oh, you mean the, the, the closed loop like, oh, I was right. The or, machine predicted yeah, that I, as this, I would have uh, this understood thing is that. a bad lesion. Do you need that feedback? Yeah, I hope so. Um, so, yeah, you do need feedback, <laughs> of course. Uh. <laughs> well, Mark's, Mark's a music major. Well, I just need to understand. <laughs> yeah, so you want to reduce feedback, I guess, no? Well, yeah. Oh, but yeah, it's true. It was a recording <laughs> Noise engineer. and signal, we're not, not going to go down engineer. there. Yeah, so, okay, so, you, so how do you ensure you get feed, the feedback you need to train the AI? Yeah, so when we connect people out to doctors, like especially remote doctors, um, then our agreement with them is they tell us what the diagnosis is. Okay, so was, that's the closest right? aspect. Yeah, and then we also are getting lots of images from doctors who've already done the oh, diagnosis oh. and they have their own personal collections. Right? What's their motivation? 
Um, Build up the database. Yeah, slash payment, slash we're providing a service for patients for free at home, right? And wow. helping them seek care faster. Okay, so that's actually part of the model. So it's free for the patient? Yes. So I download the app, I take a picture of my whatever, I send it to the system, it's anonymized. The system then says, you know, red light, green light, you know, it's red, amber, green. So it does whatever, you know, analysis it does. Does says, by the way, you might want to see your derm. And there happens to be one in your area. Uh, mm, ka-ching. ka-ching. Well, small, small so, ka-ching. But Very she only small. knows that there's someone in the area because they've been advertising. Yeah, okay. Is it, so do you prioritize your referrals based on okay. advertising? Or, it, or, here's or the, anything. Here's some really good guys and here's the rest. <laughs> it's, it, yeah. We prefer to these doctors because they have a bigger kickback. Well, no, because they they don't do kickbacks. Oh, there we go. That's yeah, what she's saying. Yeah. So it's just advertising. The phrase "kickback" is loaded. Never in good. This Never good. In Especially in the medical world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, so you pro- do you prioritize based on advertising, or do you just kind of have the provider directory from you know partners loaded, no matter what? Yeah. So we um, we do rank um, based on what's most. Um, what makes sense the most, okay. right? And so, like, the reality of skin disease is 60% of cases you can deal with over-the-counter medication, okay. oh, right? Yeah. And so you can actually do... And so if a remote yeah. doctor makes the most sense, we're going to show the remote doctors okay. first. Okay. But if it's, oh, you could have syphilis or some, yeah. you know, uh, thing I requiring additional... I had a dollar for every time I got that message. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten to the point where there. I started calling genitals Jennies because it's <laughs> cuter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, we actually, go. all right. I'm going to ask you the question. We we kind of chatted about this, and this is it's not going to be at all disgusting. Yeah, no, me for, too. Most, yeah, no, 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 no. So, and we had, Dave and I looked at a thing a number of years ago where it was a connected diaper. Remember that? <laughs> I won't say the name of the company, but we looked at it from an early startup. It turns out there was a yeah. benefit. You know, you want to know what's going on, and you know, is there a problem I with the infant? Somehow blocked on that one. Yeah, I'll tell you the name afterwards. Yeah. Um, but I don't think I met with him that long. No, you did. You, I, I remember. Oh, I certainly blocked that. Hey, what idiot! Oh, that would be me. Left their phone. So, out. so the qu- the question is, um, the what's question. it like dealing with a use case that's sort of uncomfortable almost? I mean, you know, I mean, I've done technology products. You know, it's been a machine, it's been a block of wood, it's been you know whatever it is. But this is sort of like I'm, I'm talking about your your bits, <laughs> <laughs> your Jennies. Uh, what's yeah. that like? Uh, and it's so, always and you have a good sense of humor, but and I guess yeah, that's, maybe that helps, that's what you but, need. Yeah. But what's it like? I mean, when you go and you yeah, do a pitch, PowerPoint investors. pitch, and yeah. we're going to talk about genital Cause lesions. Because when we met you at um, the MIT event, yeah. what was it last year? You yeah, had at the this end of the year, June, pretty grody picture. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. But it definitely caught your attention. Yeah. Um, Which so is yeah, good. what? How's it like with investors? Does anybody care? Do they get over it quickly? Um, so the investors who are more experienced, we'll yeah. say. Uh, look for go-to-market strategies that are unique that other people haven't done right. that have like a higher you know potential for revenue because of the the functionality. Right. Um, and so so that's the lens I prefer. To, okay. You know, be, but then like if we're solving problems for people in the uh, age range of eighteen to thirty right. who are. Um, those aren't investors, right? Right. (laughs) Investor. And so I, I wish I were solving a problem for investors because I know if we were still doing skin cancer evaluation, of course it would be a problem that more investors really relate to personally. Yeah. Um, and, and that's still part of my pitch because I, I had it and that's how I got into this. Um, but it is, I mean, it's an uncomfortable thing. I think in, in relationships between entrepreneurs and investors, you have to be comfortable talking about uncomfortable things, whether that's you aren't going to make your quarterly yep. goals. Yeah, there or... we go. That's far more uncomfortable than talking about someone's genitals. Yeah, so for or me... Or you're actually not talking about someone's genitals. You're talking about you're solving a problem, you're taking a picture, and, you know, it's a, it's a medical condition issue. Yeah. It's not the... Inve- you're not solving the investor's personal problems. So here's what yeah. confuses me, just mm-hmm. briefly, is that yeah. I would... Uh, does your site care that it's a genital disease or can they just take can you do melanoma as well right now um so we have built the model for melanoma okay. um but we are just addressing genital skin diseases on our site so do you tell people you can upload it but we're not, you're not going to get any feedback from us or what happens if they send you the wrong picture yeah so like mark logs in and he takes a picture of himself his face yeah what does your system do 
Oh, for now, I mean, we still have to build in filters oh. uh, for like saying this. Most isn't people the say right. that when they see my face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you walked right into that one. The, yeah. the, you know, part of the body right now, the filter we have in place is do you have, or did you take a picture of skin or not? Right? And that's um, right. the most basic filter. And then, um, like, it's interesting. Of course, there's AI involved in the, the back end model of matching the visual, visually, the disease uh, ver- uh, to the picture. You uploaded, um, but we're actually sort of taking that same technology and putting it on the front end to say, is this this or not? Is right. this that or not? Um, and then helping, like, is this picture too blurry? Right? Because every dermatologist they talk to, they're like, at least a third of the pictures Are yeah. aren't yeah. focused yeah. on the yeah. right thing, don't yeah. have the right lighting, right. and I can't even tell. I, I can't give you a recommendation. That makes on sense. That. So, so uh, actually, okay, so that brings up a topic. Um, still haven't gotten to failure, but. Um, so can the dermatologist, because of the nature of the disease, could, are the dermatologists quite happy or the, uh, are the health care providers in general quite happy to have somebody just take a picture and send it off to, I'll say, India or somewhere, the low-cost provider, just like you can send an, X, an, an X-ray or a scan off to India? Is that an alternative? To, what is the AI adding? That, um, it's cutting out the, uh, the person, but right? Is that... It, the machines. Yeah, I'm sorry. Just the, the competition is the uh, what do you call it? what do you call that the uh, outsourcing the Amazon Turk. What do you call it? the mechanical Turk? Turk. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what's the deal with the pricing and the success versus a mechanical Turk? Hopefully you're better than. Hopefully the AI is better. Tell me this. <laughs> Tell me this. <laughs> well, she's training it. Yeah. So so it is it is being trained right, I mean, and you have different levels of capability. One's Replic- you know, being better than your friends or family members looking at it and telling you what to do. That's yeah, really easy that's to awkward. be better than. And then there's, like, primary care slash emergency care right, capability. Right. And then there's dermatologists, right? And then there's better than dermatologists. Right. But are there dermatologists? So just the whole model, how does the model work? Because there are, I, I know it's not mechanical Turks um, through uh, Amazon or whatever it was. But there is the model where there are lower-cost providers who are human, Um in other parts of the world, or mm-hmm. even in the United States. Yeah. Um, how does that work, work versus AI these days? And how does that work for pitching investors? Yeah. yeah. So, um, so the concept of analyze a picture or send a picture to a doctor remotely is a very old concept. Right. Right. Yeah. That's you've heard that pitch yeah. many times. Oh yeah. And so. I think what, one of the things that makes us unique is we're actually just sort of plugging into those systems. We're helping patients make choices and then saying, hey, you know, here's a doctor you can talk to, whether that's a remote doctor very far away or close by. Right. Um, and then, you know, we do have to internally decide which, uh, which doctors are high enough quality in order to, you know, connect patients to... So we talked to somebody the other day, you weren't there, but um, who had... That's not take- a bit important then. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> Didn't have the microphone on, apparently. <laughs> That's the most dangerous place in the world is between me and a microphone. <laughs> Another cliche joke. We talked to somebody who I guess arguably was in a similar space. It wasn't mm-hmm. dermatology, and mm-hmm. it really wasn't anything. To was do it with radiology? Or? Um, actually, it was radiology. Got it, yeah. And that seems like that's a common one. Yeah. yeah. And what they were doing was, um, and there was a nice technical twist to it, but they were assisting the doctors or the, whoever the clinicians were in analyzing the scan or what the, the thing yes. in the lobby. Yes, yes, yes. How would your tech, I, I guess. How tech, would your thing? Yeah, how would your stuff work for that? How does the tech work for that? As opposed for to assisting screening. like a dermatologist. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I often have this question. Um, so there's radiology and pathology. And that use case is someone, you know, in a dark room looking at slides and then right. making a determination. Yes. And uh, so to deploy any technology <laughs> successfully, you have to have their buy-in, right? right? So then, you know, startups and companies solve that person's problem right. as a radiologist or pathologist. Derm is different. Derm's highly distributed. Two-thirds of the care is delivered by primary care and other frontline yeah. workers, like emergency yeah. care. Right. Yeah. And so, um, and, and also, kind of, over 50% of a dermatologist's job right now is looking at something and instantly identifying what it could be and then asking the right questions to figure out what, you know, what it probably right. is. And so the decision to be screening versus helping yeah. an expert yeah. was a very uh, thought-out choice oh. because we're tailoring it to the problem 
of distribution and of non-experts okay. doing the most okay. care. Okay, right. I see. So sort of a uh, more you're better off with, actually you're better off with false positives or whatever at your level. Is there there's some false positive, false negative thing that plays in here? Or is it just the, the, the fineness of the micrometer? I'm trying to figure out some analogy. That is if you, you're, you're in a screening function now, so you're better off erring on the side of, look, you got a problem. Have someone take a look at that thing. Yeah. And if you were aiding doctors uh, who would, or primary care or otherwise, who already reached diagnosis or not, would it be a, what would differ in your model? If we were helping experts? Yeah. I mean, so we would definitely need to be like a 510K right. device. Right. So this is, oh. right? it's not, de it's oh. decision support, right? Oh. Not diagnosis. As yeah. you kind of said at the onset. But Ooh. dermatologists want to know diagnosis. They're right. pretty good at, you know, and they trained for many so years I, to yeah, do so that decision support. Yeah, so basically, again, you know, I'm the patient. I took a picture of whatever ails me. It comes back and says, go see a dermatologist. And, in fact, go see this dermatologist because they're nearby. Uh, you're, you're giving the patient more power. You gotta have that thing looked so at. So wait a minute. So let's that, go back. That's, re that's really your your patient use case. That's my and, whole soapbox. Right. Is empowering patients right. to take makes sense care of their own health. So is it a five ten? So uh, no. So it's not a, it's not required. No, I know, no, no, I know. But is that the is that the with with the model just uh, on the on the technology side would the mm -hmm. would the technology be different? Let's ignore the five ten. Oh, the baseline technology would it be the same if you were aiding a physician as opposed to screening to begin with. I don't think that goes to five tens yet. No, let's right. ignore the five ten. Yeah. Different. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so it would be very similar, but you would be right now. We're just doing image analysis, and then we're combining that with these other questions, uh, like risk oh, factors for patients. Got it. Um, so you'd have to involve got it. both yeah. the additional circumstances of the patient in the AI beyond the just the visual analysis. So you're not as a business foreclosing going into the assisting a physician post facto, but you that would presumably take more regulatory compliance so that may come later oh yes that's our, oh, our plan is to help so this is the go-to-market strategy yeah you got it you you're, got you're it. a diagnosis business fun, at, at some point in the future so tell us about theory yeah. of failure yeah. i mean not about your business but in general you yeah. had an so interesting this comment. is a podcast about failure yes yeah. Yeah. And, and that's things why we're here that's why we're here <laughs> we're, we, we were just failures yes we're the poster children for <laughs> failure wait um, let's talk about that first Oh, well, <laughs> well, that's like you're trying to interview the interviewer. That yeah. never hey, works. I can ask yeah. the question. Listen, listen to the first <laughs> podcast. Can. You'll hear you'll hear the business yeah. that I started. Uh, um, yeah, that's true. That, so, did. and that's how I got interested in. And no lawyer ever admits failure. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so that's easy. Exactly. <laughs> Doesn't uh, occur. I it's think. Just a, just another bill. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> so along. Oh, so it's a podcast about failure and lessons learned. As part of this particular, yeah, but she had, it, but but Susan had an interesting comment. Uh, oh, I think it well in the email it was sort of the fail fast comment. So. Oh, oh yeah. So, yeah, I mean that's that's how well do you known. guys view failure? Yeah, in general, I mean, in general, how do you view failure? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, failure is just such a loaded question oh. or statement or word. Okay, yeah. there we go. Word. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so. So my attitude of it is like you're going to have a lot of hypotheses, and some of them, are, most of them are going to be wrong, but you have to test those. Um, and so, like, in a version of this company a year ago, I was interviewing dermatologists and saying, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we could screen out all the uh, people with moles who is definitely benign? And they were like, Oh God! No, no, no! Don't cut off my, you know. Yeah, I have kids. Uh, I have kids in college. You can't do that. <laughs> I, need, <laughs> exactly. I need a new Jaguar this year. You know, and, and that was a, a hypothesis. There was like, well, you know, maybe they're interested in working on more complex problems, or, um, and and that was just very wrong, right? Um, but it's not that it killed the company, right? It was just a single hypothesis. So that would be a patient-friendly thing, but then it ki it kills your revenue model. Because, you know, hey, you don't need to bother going to the derm. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not, I'll argue that's not even failure. The loaded question failure does come with some um, some pointiness. And that's really, that's just 
uh, you're interviewing the market to find out what it wants. Yeah. Okay, that's not failure. Okay. I think failure to me is going down is is not what you're saying. It doesn't fall in the even general category of where you're at on testing hypotheses because that is the conversation with the marketplace mm. through either literally conversations or through introducing a product that fails. That's a conversation. Failure to me is deciding not to take money when you should have taken money in retrospect you learn. I mean oh, that that's a sort of different that's philosophical. That's a dangerous question. game. Retro hindsight bias. <laughs> well, that's the problem. That's the problem we have. Actually, that does get to Yeah, you're right. That's When you a, get to David's age, there's a lot of hindsight bias. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. So to, well, talk about that because the so the, we often don't know. So the, so you can fail I guess in the course of how many podcasts? We did about 26 podcasts. Of this series? Yeah. Is the, this season two? I forget. This is season two. But we did 26 or so in season one. Wow. And I think that there was a, a debate. It's like on, a full day of this crap. <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you just line them yeah. up. Yeah. End end. Actually, it'd be you have like imagine. a 12-hour plane ride. Just yeah. Uh, uh, well, yeah, you'd probably jump. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you'd like yeah. try and open, wrestle yeah. the door open. No, I've just got to go. Well, that's why that guy <laughs> shot the hole and poked the hole in the, um, the International Space Station. He was listening to our podcast. Yeah, he, he tried had to get, get out. I got to get out of here. I can't wait. <laughs> Um, so <laughs> I guess the, the debate, Ziad, was, Ziad, had he been with us, would have said that fail, What's his theory about failure? His sort of theory about failure. Runs out of cash. Oh, yeah, that's right. His theory mm. was you run out of cash. Well, that's, that's sort of like a no-brain. That's like people die when they die. Um, but I think he would say that it was a, a decision that you should have made more intelligently. Mm. And I would argue almost always that most, these certainly are some bad decisions, like invariably Mark as a CEO made them, um, and should have known better. But largely it's retrospective. It's always looking back in hindsight. Geez, I should have, remember we talked to um, the basement tinkerer named John? John, yeah, yeah who did the, uh, he's John doing Daniels. A, a, um, AR VR thing. He's now. got a great, great company now. Right. And he's one of his prior companies. He had, they had decided to put more time, he was a basement tinkerer and had come up with quite a few ideas over and time. And a patent lawyer. And made, yeah, made a lot of them, made a lot of them. Um, yeah, go figure that one out. He made a lot of money over time. By the way, time. he became a patent lawyer because he just didn't want to pay the goddamn lawyers. So yeah. he went to law school and, and he got <laughs> yeah. a law degree and then he became a patent he, lawyer. He did well. So it sounds like Seriously. he ultimately made a set of decisions which at the time made sense to him. Yeah. And probably made sense to his investors and it sounded like they really did, but it turned out in retrospect um, it didn't work. And right. likewise, your company, you made a decision to run your company lean and you didn't know that uh, 9 11 or whatever it was was coming. Well, it was up. the Goldman Sachs. Or the, the dinosaurs know, the, were going to die because it was yeah. so long ago. Well, yeah, a meteor exactly. Hit. A uh, meteor but, you hit know, when you were doing uh, your company. Uh, but all of it. All of the investment from the follow-on rounds were tied up with the whole, you know, uh, crisis, financial crisis that occurred. So my my lead outside investor uh, had money in Goldman Sachs, and when that exploded, so did his uh, his spare money. And then the uh, Japanese company, which I won't name, that was my lead institutional, had their first major loss. And you know, basically, uh, to Ziad's theory, we ran out of money. Well, and, that's and, just like you died, yeah. That and happens. we died. Because so wait a minute. Okay, so wait a minute. Here's the refined view, of, the refined view of failure, which is that it's not having made the wrong decision. Because I think Ziad's wrong about it's that. It's figuring out you made the wrong decision right. quickly. So that's the fast or fail. Having a, or, right. or, or having a plan B. So you're mm. or having a plan B in place. Okay. Maybe I even had a plan B. Oh, what you know, was your from, plan B? So we were move, going from consumer to commercial use cases to there's no. So it was you a know, company called Airprint, your, and then it was. If you uh, paid your lawyer, that would have been a good plan. I paid B. the other lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Gotcha there. <laughs> now I'll think like, oh, it's so much cheaper to hire a lawyer than go to law school and learn how to do <laughs> it's it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, mom, dad, uh, there's more tuition bills coming. <laughs> that'll be so that'll be a, a nice so, conversation to hear. So talk about your damn plan B. I didn't know you had a plan B. Yeah, yeah, plan was A, B, C, and D. Well, you should have had E then. I, I had so, license it. So I, what was the failure for you? Uh, Other than being yourself. Uh, well, that, but that, running, uh, always uh, running out of money was 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 actually a big no. Part but then your plan B should have fixed that. Um, it, during, there was that period where everything went haywire. Yeah, yeah, always making excuses. Well, you just you couldn't get Trump. people. To, I just couldn't. Well, thank you. Uh, we just couldn't get people to, to put money in because they're like. But well, shouldn't you have had a plan B? Shouldn't you have had enough Undoubtedly, money? Undoubtedly, I was first time CEO. Then another excuse. I was much younger. I was much younger. <laughs> oh wait a minute. In, so, in my teens. But, so wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you're, but you didn't have enough money in the bank. I had no money in the bank. We, we were closing we were closing our follow on and everyone called up and said sort of like that margin call gentleman you know yeah. uh, cliche 
and everybody, everybody was ready, and then they were like, have you read the paper? What would your That's investors all. have said if you had said to them, so maybe there's something to what Ziad has to say, which is they run out of money. It, which it's is a fact. Plan a B ought to be, ha- ought to be to have a year's worth of cash in the bank. Well, But no investor would tolerate see, that. See, the, pro- the problem we had there is that people were like, don't raise too much money. Yeah, that exactly. Was the era, don't raise too much. So, I, I mean, I kept my burn was sub 50K a month, you know, four people plus outsourcers on, on, on staff. You know, we ran cheap. I, you know, I had shared office for two people that four people used. And, you know, I, I just didn't pay your lawyer. I paid the good one. <laughs> Sorry, it's a recurring joke. <laughs> but, um, I, you know, oh boy. Uh, our IP, you know, assertions weren't strong enough, I guess, for the there four we cats go. we followed. There we had crap filed. inventions. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry. So wait a It's minute. like watching a ping pong tournament, isn't it? So wait a minute. So have you gone down this road yet? Because maybe, maybe what if getting a better lawyer? Maybe oh, the, sorry. So maybe the theory should be that. So so the, so the failure, maybe in retrospect, this is the season's theory now. Okay. Because we get failed my theories. Season, my, my season was over. No, I'm just saying the failed the theory last month. Oh, so last year. So I last think, year, oh, season one. The season theory one, was you, you ran out of cash. That's yeah. And my and, and my theory failed. was that my theory was that we can only identify failure in in retrospect or in hindsight which would be susan's arguable well but comment. so so we had the but fish guy one. last year fish you know the, the fish business yeah i can't remember the name of any oh, of these things uh greg he, ballinger ballinger it was super interesting fish yeah. he yeah it was like it was like kind of uh, uh boat to boat table okay. uh for restaurants and you know uh he didn't realize his business had failed until he walked into a restaurant one of his customers and saw a competitor's terminal there and he was like, "Oh crap, what's that? Why aren't you? You know, business is down with me." But then he sees someone else's terminal who did it faster, better, cheaper. Uh-huh. So he didn't, and they'd grown. I guess they were about ready to go public. And then he was he was on his his road show, and that's where he was stopped in a restaurant that was his client. Mm-hmm. And he noticed you that know who it was. It was what's his face from Chicago, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a Chicago restaurant. Yeah, you know the um, the Mexican guy. Uh, oh, not uh, the Mexican guy, the Mexican chef. Uh, uh, he's Rick Mexican. Bayless. Rick Bayless, something. yeah. So, you know, you know again, who Rick Bayless is? No. It's a, oh, come on. He was like a top. Don't you shop at like anywhere? The like Frontera. Frontera. Frontera Salsa. You know Frontera Salsa? You mean. Come that, on. That's okay. I'm this sorry. Is, so, I'm from David, Texas. Come on. I, I get snooty about salsas. Frontera wow. Salsa. See, anyway, he was. Uh, so, he it's was, a salsa fail. We've got, we've got salsa he bias. Was never like, he was never like. <laughs> a, so, what salsa would you buy? <laughs> oh, no, I can't. So, wait a minute. So, he was. You never, know, we, we did one of these at uh, a, a Takiria in. South Boston, Loco. Was it Loco? There we are. They let us. Yeah, that's yeah, true. We didn't, we, did we, a, we, we didn't publish it, though. It was so awful. We should have done... Well, you might have been biased against so wait, northern, we have like, northern Tex-Mex We have digressed so many times. Where were we? That's what we do. Oh, that's true. Forgot. Um, so Sorry. where were we popping back in the chart? So we. So the theory was... So going all the way back. So f- f- we were talking about... F- I wanted to get down to the point is that would your investors and would your investors allow you to say, and the answer is clearly not, oh... I don't. I'm not. I would otherwise raise a million dollars if I'm going to. I'm going to raise two because I want to have money in case you guys shit the bed on me. <laughs> so that's never going to work. Yeah, but what's the question then? So is the question? Well, you can't get an investor to do that. How does she prevent that, this, failure? This is validates re- your view, which is that you can't I, get investors to do anything other than I, run. I lead. raised the bare minimum, and I tried to raise sometimes three months in advance. Yeah. So I would get like my my favorite investor, who I won't name. Our, my term sheet was a text message from him. <sighs> I'd say, hey, we're running low. The tank's almost empty. Yeah. What do you need? I'd give him the number. And, he, and he, the next day, he'd say, 150 in. Done. I'm like, I love you, man. So wait a minute. So let's go back, <laughs> so let's go back to failure. So, so we've What's been babbling. So just yeah, dive in. Exactly. Just dive in it's and down say, on the something. Cape. So say something about failure based on what you've heard. Otherwise, we're going to babble some more. Yeah. So um, <laughs> it sounds will. like the definition of failure is a wily one. Uh, <laughs> all right there you go <laughs> um, <laughs> season I think two opener <laughs> wily. You, you make a million tiny decisions in your company yeah. all of those can lead to, to failure which right. we can define as or success but run a, statistically out of money. more often failure though correct oh definitely yeah why yeah. by the way oh I mean, there you go why uh, why statistically? That was the other question we had from season one that was never answered. Why is it more answered. likely to fail? Why are companies more likely to fail than succeed, other than expansion of the universe and everything else? Bad salsa. Bad salsa. Uh, 
Yeah, in Frontera. So I have a mental model that I've been testing. Okay. Oh, All right. Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Can we be the first? <laughs> oh, we need that music. <laughs> do, do, do. Yeah. yeah so, do, so we're talking about like our three listeners are now going to hear something for the <laughs> first time. <laughs> <laughs> so um, my theory, um, and I'm still testing it, but is that you have a you know a hundred percent of things that you could slash should be doing, yes. and you have this like top five percent that that will actually move the needle in the next month if you do those things. All right, yeah. And then the bottom 10%, which is what will kill you if you don't do it, right? Um, yes. And that can be like growing too fast, not talking to the FDA or whatever it is. Yeah. And then you have this middle 85%, which is just still stuff on your to-do list and you just try not to do all And by the help. way, none of these are, these are all subjective determinations, largely subjective, or I guess it could be objective. So it's, a, it's, it's, but it's, a, your mental model is like a yeah. curve, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Things, yeah. Things, yeah. Keep going. So keep going. Well, no. And so, um, just the, the entrepreneur's battle and like any job doing anything's battle is make sure you don't get distracted by the 85%. Don't drop the ball on the 10%, right. um, but like make sure you're focused on that five. Um, maybe you can outsource or whatever this 85% in the middle, um, but don't get distracted. So what goes in the 85%? Is that ad- is administrivia? Is that, is that uh, well, stuff that doesn't matter? Is that you know, dealing with your patent lawyer? Oh, sorry. Oh, that's <laughs> very, very important. Yeah, so um, and then I guess you could say there's stratification within that 5% that you should be focused on. But an example is like... Um, I guess, like, getting back to someone who you might have a contract with in, like, six months, right? Maybe you can defer that to next month. It's not in the top 5% right now. So then I I would push back, and again, using the fish guys example, that you you have to be careful because if you prioritize certain things, you might not notice that the yeah. market shifted from out from under you. Yeah. Totally. So in this guy, in this, and again, I'm totally or conflating. Or you might be but, wrong about what the 85% is. I'll argue, so you have a board because... If you didn't have a board, maybe these are there's your subjective determination of which which five percent is where, correct? Mm, yeah. Well, so that's the challenge. That's why you have figuring a board. out what the eighty five percent is. Well, then right. what's the point? Yeah. So. Uh, well, that, that's why you have a board. Uh, I mean, the answer is. <laughs> I mean, the answer is probably many companies wouldn't have failed if they would made the eighty five percent one of those items in the eighty five percent they had put in the top well, but five. But she just said she's going to outsource the eighty five percent, which could be hey board. Deal, you keep no. an eye on this crap because I'm going to keep no, an eye you on can't the make them 5% type, at either. You can't make them type in databases and stuff like well, that. Well, depends what's in that. What's in that bucket? Yeah. And everything. Uh, a, a in the lot 85% bucket. is in the 85% bucket. Like uh, an example of what I'm doing wrong right now is um, I should have made a CRM for investors okay. and then I can paint, you know, and, and set up this HubSpot right. system that I'm making sure to, to stay on top of that because fundraising is my priority right yep. now. Um, but I've put that in the 85%, but that should have bubbled up to the top 5% by now. Well, right? that gets back to Ziad's theory of you'll run out of money. Well, there we point. go. Right. Exactly. Right. And you may be someday doing a podcast for you. Where, uh, hopefully this doesn't happen, but you may say, you know, that first business just didn't do quite as well because... I should have paid more attention to that. Yeah, exactly. Well, so, that's a pro- that's a conundrum with being a, a, a founder slash CEO. But this goes to the statistical the whole statistical yeah, theory but, that everything fails. And that most things well, fail. In the end. You know, that's especially you know applicable to like restaurants and things like that. But the big pain in the butt being a CEO is you're always raising money. You're always raising money, and it's the least fun part of the job mm. because part of raising money is saying. Here, here are pictures of my children and having people say, those are some ugly kids. Because that's really, you know, to me, what, when, I, when I started a company, you know, you're, you're showing something that's important to you. In your case, you've got a, a very personal connection or reason behind it or that at least is fueling, you know, why you get up in the morning. Yeah. But, you know, fundamentally, you're like going through your deck and then people are like, nah, that's a, that, your kids are ugly, <laughs> you yeah. know. So that's kind of so discouraging. I want to go back to, so I just don't, I'm arguing that you really don't, so there's probably things you have to do for sure. For example, mm-hmm. we know you'll get thrown in jail if you don't pay your employees. Yeah, exactly. Okay, payroll is at the payroll's 10%. Important. Yeah. Okay, we can all agree but on that. But you can outsource that. There are companies that actually but those, do you know, payroll benefits. But even those for, aren't going to be the things that probably drive you out of business. I think what's going to mm-hmm. drive you, what most companies out of business is, maybe it's just that. Maybe the answer is that failure is the norm. I'm going back to that topic. Failure is the norm because there are, because humans aren't perfect. And that when faced with, let's assume 100 questions a month that you have to answer, is that a fair guess? 
That's a thousand, a hundred a day. That would be a, a day, yeah. Okay, hundred a day, whatever. It's even worse then. So it's uh, thirty hundred or whatever that would be. Um, <laughs> Great. Mark's thinking. Where'd you get your through. physics degree from again? <laughs> thirty hundred. <laughs> so. The bottom line is you just statistically can't get all those right, and, and most companies fail because of that, and that's yeah. simply the answer. No, yeah. Failure is natural because you statistically can't make the right decisions. Yeah, so we have different mental models about this. Really? Why so? How? Yeah, because <laughs> you there have... There can't be multiple, multiple I models. View the, I write and got a system design and management degree. I view the world in a series of feedback loops, and yeah. all of those 30, what, 30, 100... 30, um, 30, 30, <laughs> good thing you didn't have an English degree because he'd say this is gooder. <laughs> gooder. Uh, all those good. 30, Which is a joke decisions. I stole stole from last week's Bill Maher episode on Friday night. Keep going. Gooder. Well, yeah, all those thirty hundred decisions um, are <laughs> opportunities for uh, learning, right? And like you're gonna make the decision, you just don't you don't want it to enter the void, right? Why why we're talking about in my business. Um, making sure there's, you know, diagnosis information right. associated with all the images. Um, and so it's, it's like we, we pick a metric. We're going to measure success based on the number of images we have uploaded in right. the next six months. And then we just make sure almost everything is, you know, catering to that. But that's, so but that's product, product, product. Right. What about the other yeah. crap? Yeah, there's one? a lot of other. Because product, yeah. product, 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 I get. Yeah, and the 3,000. You've just talked about <laughs> 500, not 3,000. But uh, it, but you're going to be is, wrong. You're going and you can but, pick an arbitrary you, percentage of the number of time you'll be wrong. But right? the problem is that I think what you, I think what I hear you saying is that you can you're an optimist and that and that you can through sufficiently fast feedback design your avoid failure. Should I take my rose-colored glasses off? Yes. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that the 300 is a large number and that your feedback loop can only improve your chances, but it can't, and maybe that will not well, she may, you. may her. I mean, again, it's a new era, certainly from... Oh, come I, on. I founded my company in There's the 19-somethings, yeah. you know, 18 years, 17 years ago. Um, so you're the you're the neutral party here, right? Because I'm the entrepreneur, right. like dreamer, and you're you play yeah, the role of lawyer right now. Yeah, <laughs> and he's, look, he the plays many roles, horrors. and none of them are good. <laughs> but but I've raised money. I've gone down this road. I've raised money for my own thing. I've raised money as part of a. And you were the norm team. because you were the failure. Not all of mine have failed. I mean, I had I had some good. So ex- why don't we just plan for failure? Why doesn't every business just plan for failure? I think every which business is, should. Why am I raising money? Because you want to lose it. That's why you're raising. I'm raising money well, that's so what, you that, can lose money. That's that's the that's the VC that's argument. That's the American dream, right no, no, no. there. But that's <laughs> the, that's the argument of the VCs to their LPs. That's, that's thunder. Not a good idea. Yes, thunder. Holy crap! Thunder. See, that's a failure. We're never leaving here. <laughs> um, <laughs> Keep but, going, yeah. But you know, that's the VC model is I'm going to raise a billion dollars or a yeah. bunch of money. I'm telling my limited partners, my my LPs, yeah. I'm going to lose eighty percent of this money. You know, spreading my bets. I'm going to I'm going to fire bolts against the wall, but one of them might hit a bullseye, and that one will be much more than the crap that I've oh, been I've, spreading. So that sh- one bullet will hit something. It's the blind squirrel theory. You know, even a blind squirrel finds a, a, an acorn every well, now and that's then. that's what we've, like, that's what the financial industry has learned over the last 30 years. Like, it's hard to pick winners. So right. just right. own the whole market because, like, otherwise. Let's find all the genital war know. image <laughs> com- rec companies and let's give them all five million bucks. All right, one and of them one of them will rise to the top. Right. You know what? If there are, how many did you say? 30, <laughs> 30, 100. There must 30, be 100. many. I feel like we're a rarity, but okay. Is um, Actually, is that a problem? So, like, when I did my company, Airprint, there were other ways to solve the problem yeah. in the pre-smartphone era. The, yeah. the problem we solved is securely printing crap, mm-hmm. either commercial or consumer images. Uh, and it was related to the work we had done over at Polaroid, where I was. So This is, this is not a question, by the way. No, no, but it eventually gets there. It meanders over. Uh, it's a <laughs> verbose question. Musician. So, what was the question? I've forgotten. <laughs> uh, you were going to say no, so, something. So, oh, but, yeah, you were going to your but point I had was some assistance. other companies in the field. Yeah, so I had other things I could say. I'm like this, but. You know, I'm like the Uber of genital warts. Yeah. Or I'm the... <laughs> Good. And actually, and we had an entrepreneur, Daniel, last season. Who I'm still oh, Daniel. With. Yeah, who yeah, no, yeah, he's like, course. I really hate oh, this. Oh, Daniel. Daniel. Yeah. Hi, well, hello, Daniel. There's a the, shout out. He hates the analogy. He hates the analogy stuff. He hates the elevator pitch. I don't want to be the you know, Airbnb of oh, you know, right. general awards. That. Again, I'll use. Well, that was only because he, he was not able to I oh, analogize. He, he was resistant to, yeah, to analogize. Was. And yeah. actually, it was very it was an interesting confrontation because he... 
confronted uh, Ziad and said, why oh, do you guys make so me do this crap? Isn't this the Spotify or Pandora of uh, skin disease? <laughs> Actually, that's... Act- that's the, we're, we're the Shazam of skin disease. Shazam, Shazam, I'm sorry. <laughs> one of those. <laughs> and yeah. it was one Have you ever those. said that or are we just... Teasing oh, this out now. This yeah, great. teasing it out now. I mean, we can make a million analogies. Yeah. We're like, we're doing uh, Google Maps, but, the, <laughs> but with skin instead of... In bits. With, you know, <laughs> right. with Jenny's. With Jenny's. Starting with Jenny's. Just, just Starting start go to market. It always um, starts with Jenny's. <laughs> <laughs> Everything always... That's actually... That may be true. That's true. That's true. Chicken and egg issue. Um, all right. Yeah, I'm going to um, keep moving. Okay. But but do you know, uh, oh, so, do you have, so you don't have a comparable yeah. or yeah, do you, no yeah there's no comps there, there no there's no comps yeah, there on this yes, when you pitch it yes there are there's three derm three derm three derm you know three isn't yeah, three derm I know three derm so there there are companies in this business there are a lot of companies that investors actually say oh you're like three derm yeah right. we are but we focus on one part of the body but so the question I was really urging you know urgently that trying wasn't to ask a question, was though. I know but the thought was yeah so. I there, was you're the only one. You're 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 a one of one in this particular, you know, swim lane. Is that problematic for fundraising? Is that problematic no, for? Good. Or is it? Or do you think that's an advantage? So I was talking to a serial entrepreneur lately, and she said, and I think it's very wise. Uh, when you talk to investors, present ninety percent of what they've seen before yeah. and can pattern match. Yeah. Okay. And ten percent of new things because if you if you present yep. any more than 10% they're going to be like oh this is too complex I don't yeah yeah okay. that's true that sounds right and, and so, for Mark you'd have to make it like 99 and 1 well that's fine we, for Mark <laughs> it would be like we're just like the other company but we have a different name and that yeah. would work for Mark yeah except and so, for we're not successful and have no money right <laughs> and you just generally you right. don't want people to have to do work to figure yeah. out what you're right yeah that's a great about. point that is a great point um and so that's a great point um, and you want to get them before they whip out the the smartphone and start checking their email too because <laughs> that's that was the other thing when i you know originally did my thing and started speaking a little bit at sloan that was the first tip that i was giving young entrepreneurs is when you see the, at that point it was blackberries when you see the blackberry come out you're dead. So wait a minute. So let's go back to this comment, which is yeah. I, if I, that's it's just a learn, it's a teaching aid, right? Because yeah. it, what you can do is just keep, change your story over time, which is once they kind of get it. That's called mm-hmm. human learning, HL. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, or like right. an analogy. I can make a million analogies. One great one is like uh, Google and search, sort of control. It's the triage of the internet. Right, and so we're finding people liked, right I when thought, they have. I thought your Shazam one was better. I got that one. <laughs> okay. I got that one faster. What about Google Maps? I thought that was pretty. Yeah, good. but so but you're not. See, Google Maps would be more of a passive thing, uh, if I if I had to really push back on the analogy. Yeah. So I want to see where I am and where I'm going. Yeah. So I can see where that would be see, somewhat analogous, but but Shazam was. I need to. I want to capture I'll something. I'll argue you're stuck in that swim lane, though. I might be. You are. I might be. But hey, so I want to go back to the swim, swim lane. I'm swim lane in. bias. So going back. Can we to not use the word com- swim lane anymore? Yeah, I don't know why. You know, it was. I it's started, new to me. It, it's ish. I heard it a lot. Of, you know, doing some work over the summer for Amazon Web Services. Uh, they talk they about like swim that. lanes. Have you seen when you're, when you're on a, not Vizio, but I have a, a, an Apple equivalent of Mac equivalent of Vizio. There's now even a swim lane um, diagram in there. Oh, they're big. Um, so I want to go back to the thing, the swim lane I'm stuck. Which is failure, which is your comment that maybe the failure is loaded. Yeah. Because I think failure is such a prevalent thing. Maybe the failure, this is what I said last, last season, which is right. f- uh, success should be the failure. Success should be failure, right? Because it's so unusual. That's saying black should be white. Well, because you failed, you did the normal thing. You I did the good thing. Oh, you failed. Good. You failed. Lions Everybody and tigers. Fails. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, yeah, well, you failed. That's good. Because you did what you were supposed to do. Your success is a failure because it's quite unusual. Does that work? It's really convoluted. Just, it's convoluted. Well, just yeah. think of Shazam. It's the Shazam of failure. No, no, it's just muddled thinking right there. I think I think well, uh, take a, a, tell a us clinician about, might be able to tell help. Tell us more about failure and how you're how as a um, uh, entrepreneur in a newer business. Yes. Because you've been in, in business how many? Two years? Three years? Mm, one year. One year. One year. Close to three years. So how you how Close you how years, are you actually. going to not fail? Yeah, how are you going to not fail? How are we going to not fail? Sort of a double negative. Yeah. No, that's good. 
How how are you? How are you going to fight the forces of how nature? are you insulating yourself from failure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, other than, other than appearing on this podcast, well, yeah, which is which is the fast lane to failure. But um, <laughs> that's, you know, that's you know, that swim lane, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're bad. just it's yeah, just so that's a it's great just question. a swim hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so a vortex. Yeah, and yeah. It's, uh, so it's how, a drain. Yeah. What do you do to avoid failure? Raise uh, a lot or of don't money. you care? Or do you embrace failure? So I, it, yeah, it's it's loaded and difficult. I mean, I can answer it. Any number in a of few ways, ways yeah, right? Uh, and there, all my answers are always feedback loops. So tell me if oh, I'm just no. being preachy. Say, go ahead. But like talking to my team and saying, "Hey, what you know? What am I missing? Uh, what do you think I should be doing better?" Um, and having you know, being well, that's all good. Yeah, but I, you, you I, have you to said that tentatively. I, I I tend to agree with her. I no, mean, no, no, but that solves that uh, thing. the only the only kind of the only people that have talked about Mark that gets her to twenty hundred of the thirty hundred maybe. <laughs> There, there was one of one that would talk about oh, not easy. taking feedback loops, and that was Steve Jobs. I really? will tell the customer what they want, and they will oh. buy it. Well, kind of. Kind I mean, of, sort of, but then, he had many failures. He had a black T-shirt or whatever that thing was. Mock, turtle, mock, turtle, mock turtle. Turtle. But, you know, he, yeah. he got to that point after, you know, 20 years, getting booted, coming back. I mean, that's a well-documented thing. But he was the only one that didn't have that feedback loop. I know. Well, he must have, though. Well, he, he got play, fired. He, That's quite a feedback. No, they right? would conjure up oh, something oh. and say, "We're going to, you know, create a phone that's an iPod and a blah 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 and blah blah blah." We cut yeah. Susan off. She was telling us something. <laughs> That's what we do. That's true. The guests are sort of incidental. <laughs> yes, yeah, I it's mean, just, it's just two angry old men. I I'm think sorry. it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's David's like. Much so older. Going, so Steve going, Steve yeah. Jobs gets this the um, like he he created something people didn't know what to ask for. Right. You see that here the same thing with Henry Ford. And well, uh, people would have said, you know, I want a, I want a faster horse, right? Right, and that's apparently a fictional story that people use. Yeah, to, but it sounds good. To he was a yeah, terrible it racist nice. too. Apparently. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, there is a gap. There's a jump between customer needs and what you actually make, and you yeah. have to make very specific design choices about that. Right. Yeah. But like making sure you address your customer's problem, it's a really big pain point and then you're helping them solve that and then you can like get to them in a reasonable way at a reasonable cost. Like all these questions about building a business are known questions. You just have to make sure you're addressing all of them sufficiently. I have a question for you about your feedback. There's no theory. questions, David. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. This is an observation. Um, if, if feedback loops can help uh, remove your risk of failure for the twenty hundred out of the thirty hundred. Yeah. What are you gonna about the ten hundred that remain, mm -hmm. where feedback loops aren't fast enough or sufficient, or Donald Trump certainly seemed to lack feedback loops entirely. Yeah. I had to look at that. But okay, so talk about the ten hundred. Yeah. So. I think there's a better ner a <laughs> term for ten hundred, but let's not worry about it. Right now. Just I'm giving up. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, yeah, I, I there yeah. are probably one hundred million different ways. That right. I can answer because there are different. Ooh, there are how many things number. that are relevant to but what entrepreneurship? Are you doing yeah, but what one are you doing? one is like uh, endurance, right? Endurance and everyone talks true. about that. Right. Um, I ran my first marathon earlier this year. Hey, you Last you. week, you do? Um, I finished. She finished. It, and that she was finished. The goal. I've run twelve, and I always did like four something. Four was always the first yeah, number. Yeah, I think it was like four oh seven. Good yeah, for you. Great. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. It's hey. a great accomplishment. That's yeah, good, seriously. And I need to sign up for for another one. Uh, but like I watched last, one on TV once. Last week, I hit a big milestone personally. Uh, I meditated every day for a year. Um, Holy shit. Yeah. Wow. And I use Headspace, and that's really helped. Oh, I didn't like that app, but okay. Okay. Um, anyway. <laughs> not for everyone. No. Um, but, like, uh, sure. making sure I can, you know, be the person I need to be for my team. Right. And uh, for the investors and for the customers. Right. And, um, wow. Got nothing. No, I guess you're just, just doing the best. You, you put can do. virtuous and virtuous uh, circle yeah. right there. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> I, great. Yeah, I. But I guess then, you, just you know, what I can, you can do. I, you know, also got a few degrees in practice. So you, know, you would like, argue you're preparing for success. <laughs> you're not preparing for failure. Yeah. So, so your 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 keys are sort of the the personal thing, the athletic, and the meditation. You got well educated, which is not good yeah, grammar. I'm <laughs> um, you got, got gooder. Um, <laughs> you, can't, you found a you you found a problem that you could solve with you know the you know the well, smartphone or, or whatever. Um, so you you're kind of setting the setting the table with all of the you know factors that may lead to success. 
what are you doing to insulate yourself from failure, though? And well, I think, and I think it does that. come. She's, well, she's answered so, so that. That she's a good person. Well, she's been question, well educated. She's, she's no, 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 she's, no, no, she's, no, 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 no. I think what I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm, peaceful. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm trying to come up with things to shut him up, but um, throwing daggers at you. Yet. No, but you know, I think but she won't. Um, she's going to meditate about how terrible of a person you are. The reality is, I went full time a while ago, and I don't you know, pull a salary and okay. that's a scary thing. Yeah, it's and I'm really not, scary. you know, I don't have a lot of insulations for, for not failing. Um, but I think with like high risk, high reward, you know, yeah. you have to be able to, um, jump off the building and trust your parachute's going to get you a Well, that's probably true. Like all this stuff. Statistically but, though, it tends not to work. Yeah. But, but you don't need to why, worry about that. Why did you create this podcast to, the, you, well, that's a existential great question. question. <laughs> oh, I mean, oh, sorry, but that's a great question. So, so is, you it, know, is it just to educate everyone that failure is the norm? Like, no, 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 it's no. Not. It's an exploration of failure. I think this podcast is an exploration that, of failure. It's the ultimate existential question. It really is. <laughs> no, I think it's. If you didn't kill yourself, then you got to no, live no, life I mean, to the do fullest. We not do cosmology because, in the end, we know the universe is going to disappear. Well, well no, the universe is we, 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 honestly, the universe one thing, the, the answer to the question is David and I have done a series of podcasts in the past. He and I, although it doesn't look that way, we, we're friends and we get along. Barely. And we think our banter Barely. is amusing to each other. And yeah, usually an occasional else. bystander you know, who's when, forced yeah, at gunpoint. Here and Mick are here. Yeah. They join in as well. Yeah, that's right. So we, we but have, I think it's an exp- I think. But we thought we were going to do like exp- car talk for nerds. No, if, no, you know, no, the but, BUR show. No, no, no. But, but about technology and startups and all that. No, so that was. You're, you're right. That's one view. But I, but that's one. You're right. Shut up. That's a tiny swim that's lane like, of a view. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Like that's like we're the drowning gutter. in our swim gutter lane. Right now. I think it's an exploration of failure. And yeah. what, what's the norm and what isn't the what norm? What can we learn? Mm. Yeah. And so the point is to, and you've got in your perspective on it, which I think is great, is that I mean I'll say failure is the norm, and that's where statistically you'll end up, but you'll be a better person for it, and you're insulating against the. Uh, 20 hundred of it um, by feedback loops. We're running out of time, Mark is pointing out. And you're with the feedback loops, and you're doing the rest by enduring, getting ready to endure the rest of it. And then it's going to be luck. And if you can talk your investors into giving you more money so you avoid the Ziad issue, which right. is um, money. But then the downside of the Ziad thing, I do want to get this one point in to, to rebut Ziad, who's not here, <laughs> which is the issue on the money, running out of money is that you can't, and this is also goes to your issue, is you cannot ask investors, so I know you want to give me 600000 I want twice that. Um, and the reason I want twice that is if you walk away, I want to be able to get my next round from somebody else, to which their answer is, well, wait a minute. If you don't, you don't get the rest ne- next round from me because you don't deserve it because you're not meeting your milestones. So it just doesn't work. So, so, so Ziad's a- point, I would argue, just doesn't get us anywhere. Not that so I, I, I would argue it, that, that the use of proceeds discussion that you have as yeah. part of each tranche yeah. is interesting. And as an entrepreneur, you're you're wanting to cut it back to the exact nickel. And I can go 3.2 months on, on this amount of money. I'm going to do these five tasks, and then I'm going to come back for more money. The problem is, is there's not an, you know, yeah, early entrepreneurs don't plan for shit to happen. And it does yeah. happen. And they're coached not to. They're That's coached right. by investors like, hey, figure out exactly what cut you're going to do. Cut it to the bone do. and then like, cut it again. Yeah, right. despite the fact that you're doing something that has uncertainty That's in right. it, let's pretend there's no uncertainty. Add a That's 20% right. buffer, not a 100% buffer, yep. but 20%. No. Right. And then the same thing on time. So, you know, I think you have to raise twice as much money uh, to last twice as long. But, but people don't necessarily want to give you that kind of money because they want to be in the game. I guess they can tranche it out. But the bottom line is that they're That's not right. going to, if they're not committed, they're not going to. The bottom line is it's a f- risky, risky business with a 30, 100 failure That's right. So, so every, every investor wants to mitigate risk. So yeah. they're, they're spoon feeding the money and they're saying, all right, every, you know, every board meeting we're going to have a, an analysis of what milestones you met and what, what ones you didn't and why. Yeah. Before I give you an, another nickel, and it's uh, uh, partly it's like kicking the dog food dish slightly away from the dog every time the nose goes in, and after a while you're just kind of trained to look up and beg, and it, it's unpleasant. That goes back to the CEO's, you know, early stage CEO's job is 
sometimes unpleasant. Yeah, I mean, of course. I think the outward appearance of a CEO is you get to make decisions. You don't have Ooh. someone overlooking you. Yay. The reality yeah. is in a regular job, you have one boss, right. maybe two or three, right, right, right. that you just have to upward manage. And then in this world, you have all of your customers, <laughs> all of your investors, all of everyone. All your employees. You know, right. you're, you're thinking, how many months do I have left But you know, before I have to change something? Right, and right. how do I accelerate everything? You know, and do, I, I, need to, rent? do I need to reflect on all of my choices in the past six right. months and say, oh, shit, I'm doing the wrong thing. I right. made the wrong product. Like, right. we got to redo. You know, it's just like so many other factors. Yeah, so I think the Ziad, you've run out of money factor, is not off the table. No, it's not off the I just, but, I'm not sure where it goes. But, but again, I, I, I think that's the use of proceeds conundrum, which I'm starting to see with one of the companies I'm on the board of, mm-hmm. is, you know, they want to know if I give you this much, how long will it last, what will you do with it? And I think you need a, a degree of precision, and then you need a degree of, I don't know, you know, yeah. buffer. My Lock. understanding in talking to investors is you don't talk about that, I don't know, budget yeah you just okay? it's you just, a marketing you you you, you, you <laughs> plug it into all your other numbers and you right. make them all estimates that's right, right. And so but well you know what your fixed costs are anyway but anyway maybe what you do is you learn to tell a really good story mm-hmm. and then you hope that luck is with you and you have cancer and then oh. you recover no i'm just oh, kidding oh, 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 <laughs> oh we gotta throw that one yeah, in yeah yeah oh. Uh, Oh, that okay, was well, well, that's a good. It's note. a good period on the note. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good. Okay. You know, we thought we were, you know, we we're going to be really professional and avoid, you know, talking about genitals. So, you know, we did, and then you throw the <laughs> yeah, cancer thing is, in, and it's this like this is what you guys are responding. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. For, oh, thank you very pleasure. much. Thank you for thank having. You.